Hi everyone, uh, good to see you all. This is just another quick travel update. Um, again, uh, I know we've talked a lot about being on the journey and I really feel that being on the journey is what it's all about at the moment. It's about journeying with God and blazing new trails. Uh, we, as you know, are part of the pioneer network of churches and we've always been a church that has pioneered and been at the forefront of, of things. We've not been afraid to uh, to change and be different and follow prophetic leadings. And that is what we're doing in this journey. We feel God has given us a new direction as a church, moving away from this Sunday congregational model towards a different way of doing church that as yet um, doesn't seem fully defined, uh, other than knowing that we're on a journey together with God. It feels slightly like we're back in the early church and we're meeting in homes and we're gathering where we can but we are using our dining rooms and our kitchens to gather and eat together and uh, do life together and find new rhythms for the ways of doing life uh, with God that we're it feels like we're in the process of breaking down the boundaries between the sacred and secular in our lives that we're dismantling the machinery of church in order to live fully in the kingdom. Um, I think last time when I uh, did one of these travel updates, I quoted something from this book, Odyssey by Justin Camp. Uh, I'm gonna do that again because he, he writes some helpful things, uh, particularly in this about journeying. Um, the, the whole book is based on uh, the space race really and how uh, people pioneered and endeavored to do great things and go beyond uh, where we've been before, and he weaves in the story of God into this. Um, and in this particular part, he talks about how he uh, was away kind of, uh, you know, camping and fishing uh, in, uh, in the States, and how they had a guide for part of this as they took pack horses through the wilderness. And he writes, Our guide for the trip, Bucko Davis, is a member of the Mono tribe. He wore a long black canvas duster and a brown cowboy hat with a feather tucked into the band. He also carried a hatchet. And the way he took us, there were no trails. Bucko knew the land. He'd been a packer in these mountains for 30 years, but he still used blazes to track our path so we could find our way back. A blaze is a mark made on a tree by cutting the bark so as to mark a route. And trailblazing is the ancient practice of marking routes through otherwise unmarked wildernesses. Backcountry explorers today often use chalk or paint on bark Reflective markers nailed or tacked to tree trunks, stakes or flags driven into the ground, ribbon or flagging tape tied to tree branches or cairns which are carefully arranged piles of rocks. When done properly, blazes are made at eye level, are even higher in areas that might get snow, and they follow one another at less than exact distances. The important thing is that from each blaze one can see the next somewhere in the distance. On our 2009 trip from his saddle, Bucko would make small periodic slashes on trees all the way down to the area where we fished. Before we'd lose sight of the last one, he'd make a new blaze farther along. And I feel like uh, our journey with God uh, and as a church at the moment is a bit like this. We don't fully know uh, the destination. Uh, and actually the destination, as we've said repeatedly, probably isn't the most important part of this, but it is the journey. And it feels like God is giving us these step-by-step uh, instructions, little blazes that we can see to move towards. So for example, you know, many of you will know we've started uh, gathering once a month for worship on a Sunday evening on the fourth Sunday. Uh, we started that at Central Hall, but we felt led to actually uh, try and redo that in Swaveling, in the area that we've called home for uh, the majority of the last 40 years as a church. And so from the 26th of September, we are going to be gathering at St Albans Church from six o'clock for worship there and we're going to do that monthly. Uh, we've also put in the diary, uh, and this may be news to some, some uh, all-age family times of gathering and worship and brunch together uh, at Townhill Park Community Centre, the first of which uh, being on the 3rd of October, um, arriving from about 9.30 or so. Uh, so we feel like these are little blazes, little things that God has given us to move towards as we journey together and as we recapture something of our life with him. Um, Justin Camp goes on uh, to talk about his own experience uh, of these things and of setting out on the adventure and moving away from the comfort of maybe what we've already known, uh, the cost of doing so, but then also uh, the gain 
that we get by doing that. He says, it started so small with a seemingly insignificant prayer on a Tuesday evening in rural Oregon, and with a feeble yes to an invitation to pray and listen for the voice of God on a hunting trip in the wilds of Montana. But God took my pitiful can-do offerings and turned them into something epic. He took me to places I couldn't have imagined, and that was just the beginning. For when we relent and start walking, trekking, sharing space with God, everything is always just the beginning, even endings. I didn't realise it on that airplane four years ago, but every expedition with God is preparation for another. Everything he is, everything he's about, is inexhaustible love. So when we offer him our yeses and head off, we step into a forever expanding, forever heavenly adventure, life ignited. So what difference will it make? All of it. All the difference it has sure for me. Did it cost me something? Yes. For joy and connection, I've had to face the ways I hurt my family, my friends and my acquaintances, and to be willing to try to get better. For peace and freedom, I've had to give up my idols of approval and position, security and comfort, and I'll have to give up yet more. For purpose and significance, I had to give up my career, but what I've gotten in return is so much better and so much bigger than those real costs, that those real costs seem to fade into the background into the backward distance as I keep moving forward, following God's blazes, toward him, toward home. So are you ready for the adventure of your lifetime? Will you step out into the broad country of God and follow the path he's blazed just for you? Will you let him ignite your life and take you home? Will you take your first step today? And I want to encourage us, each of us, as members of City Life, to be bold in taking those steps as God leads to follow the blazes and the marks he lays out before us as we journey together into what feels like the unknown to us, but is fully known to God. He knows the end from the beginning, and he is trustworthy uh, and true. And we can follow where he leads, because ultimately, uh, this life ignited, I believe, is what we all want. We want our, our lives on fire for Jesus. We want to be purposeful and full of joy and peace and hope. And I believe that the journey God has got us on uh, will reignite that in us, not only for us, but also for those around us. Uh, it will be for purpose, for significance, for salvation and for the establishing of his kingdom in and through our lives. So would you join us on this journey? Uh, keep pressing in, listening to God and asking for those next steps. Uh, and as we corporately gather uh, at St Albans on the 26th of September and in Town Hill Park on the 3rd of October, uh, we pray that as we do that, something would ignite in us as we reach that blaze and maybe God will lay out the next stage of our journey before us. Uh, so be encouraged. Uh, I know the journey can be difficult, uh, but ultimately it will be worth it. It is worth it because of what we find in our reconnection with God and what it means uh, for us and the world around us. So be blessed today. Uh, keep pressing in, keep blazing those trails and keep pioneering with God. God bless.